Tony, you miss me dancing. <laughs> well, you got your hey, <laughs> Tony, the dark yeah. one, Tony Wilson. Love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for agreeing to this chat with me, Tony. I really appreciate it. You know, it's like... I can see you better now. You hear me now? Is it all good? No, I can see you better now. Uh -huh. Perfect. Right. Fantastic stuff. Well, once again, thank you for, for joining me in this conversation and stuff. Really appreciate it. And one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you, because obviously the music industry, there's a lot we talk about. And I'm, I'm involved in something called Cluster View, that we're supporting like artists and we're doing a lot of stuff out there trying to do social commentary and things like that. But we don't really talk about the production element, the production side of the industry, which is so pivotal to everything that happens in the music industry. Without you guys, there wouldn't be a music industry. So I wanted Are you to you talking about the lighting crew, the sound crew, the video crew, the drapers, the stage builders, the people <laughs> that actually build the gig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I wanted we to never get you. a mention, mate. Yeah, oh, that's a real shame. But I said, can you give me, can you just a breakdown on some of your job, what you do in your job? Because obviously it's a fantastic job. I just want to know a bit more about it because without you guys, there wouldn't be an in industry. I work in the lighting industry. Mm -hmm. And I've worked in the lighting industry for over 38 years. Wow. I joined a small lighting firm, which were specialists in the party industry. And when I joined, the party industry was considered as rubbish. And the secondary element of lighting, most lighting firms wanted to do bands and tours and all that kind of business. And that didn't really interest me that much. And I joined a firm called Halo Lighting. They mm. did parties. And this was in the early 80s. And then along came 1988, 1989. And then the party industry went ballistic, underground, that is. Mm. And there were large crowds turning up at various warehouses, etc., cetera, et cetera and they all needed lighting because it was dark without it. And uh, that's where I started, really. Wow, so basically, how did you, how did you get into that industry, though? Who, who opened art the college. door for you? Hmm? I opened the door for me. At art college, I was classed as a social secondary in the second year of my degree, and they gave us money to do parties. So we spent the money on parties and that's where I found an interest in lighting because I asked a friend of mine that was in a lighting firm and he brought along a load of lights. Lights, We wired them all up and I found my love. Wow. So, so basically you were very industrious. You just, you weren't going to wait for an opportunity to come along. You just created your own. I've always done that because I don't come from a wealthy background where you can, I have the choice of anything. I've had to work for everything. So I worked. Well, so how dangerous is that job? Can we talk about lighting? You're talking about electric, you're talking about, there's a lot of like moving parts, a lot of dangerous elements of that. And more importantly, when you climb up on those, is it the rafters, whatever you guys climb up, the girders? The truss. The, the truss. truss. Yeah, I mean... That in itself is so dangerous. I mean, how dangerous is your job? It's only dangerous if you don't listen and <laughs> you don't have the equipment to make mm. sure that you're safe at all times. Mm. If you go up high above two metres, you have to wear a harness mm. and you're clipped on to whatever takes you up there. The mm. days of climbing truss are pretty much over. Mm. That's it, really. That's the only danger element. There is the use of electricity which we call a silent killer. But if it's dealt with correctly, it shouldn't kill you. Yeah. And what so so are there do, are there any disasters? I mean I've not really heard much, but have there been any kind of major disasters within the your industry at all? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we try and avoid those. Mm, as simple okay. as that. There mm. have I can't think of a single disaster in the 38 years that I've been working in mm. that industry at any of my gigs, no. Good. And I do the big three. Okay, the big three being Glastonbury. Glastonbury is one of the big three. Mm. Latitude is also one of the big three. Wow. And Leeds and Reading, mm. but I work Leeds, is also one of the big three. Wow, amazing. That's really impressive. And, you know, for me, obviously, no, forget all whatever it is. For me, when I see a black guy, 
having that type of opportunity of creating that and doing that, it just says, it just shows that anything's possible. You know, there aren't idea. very many black people in the industry, mm-hmm. to be quite honest with you. Mm-hmm. I can think of two mm-hmm. uh, back then. Yeah. They're, yeah. Okay. There, but, there weren't many black people in there. Okay. Well, uh, you know, it makes it even more of an incredible opportunity for yourself. But when I um, when I think about you, because you, I know that you came from Tottenham. Okay. Well, I was born in Tutin Beck. Okay. My mum and dad had a slight disagreement, and then I ended up in Tottenham. Okay, yeah. right. So when I when I think about Tottenham, and this is no disrespect to top people who live in Tottenham, what I think about Tottenham is I think about uh, the incident, recent, most recent 2011 incident where Mark Duggan sadly lost his life, which uh, led to the London riots. I think about Tottenham riots, and I think about Tottenham Football Club. But that's about it. What was it actually like living in Tottenham? Violent. Violent. It's 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 an un. It weren't really for me, to be quite honest. Plus, mm. they didn't like me because I was born in Tooting Beck. And mm. when I went back to Tooting Beck, they didn't like me because I lived in Tottenham. Mm. So I was kind of a loner. But I was brought up in Tottenham way before... Mm. What, what year? 1979, I went to America. And that was when I was at school. That was a boys' school in, in Tottenham called Somerset. Mm. Uh, and it was when I joined it, it was it was in progress of being shut down. It was pretty crap school. Mm. But you know, it taught me what I needed to be taught. And I have to thank my art teacher, Mr. Kel- Kilgawa, for recognizing that I could draw, which yeah. is what brought me to lighting, funny enough. <laughs> you know what there's a lot of stories like that of people their teachers going to giving them you know giving them that you know that little bit of notice a bit of attention that made that little bit of difference even for myself that's the same for me I mean I was going down a dark path weren't for one of my teachers to help me out I would have been lost completely along the way it's great to hear that you know just, just reminiscent of what I've experienced very other, various other people but a question I want to ask you now is I know you work in production but do you have any musical heroes Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan? Mm. No, I, I, oh, but so that's what, just what I like mm. to hear in music. Mm. But I don't have it in, in, in any way drawn mm. to any particular musical movement because I've worked a lot. So mm. it doesn't bother me, musical areas. I, I know what I like, and, and that's it, really. So were you influenced at all by like the, the sound systems? Because obviously... No. Back in the day, Coxon, you never, not, not Coxon, not Van no, Contrary, what's they up? did nothing for me, any of them. Okay, so what's been your most enjoyable period of music? There must be something, there must have been a period in music. Like, you know, we think about the 80s and Acid and the effect that the had on The Summer of music. Love was my favourite. And then drum and bass. Those two areas have mm. kept me interested in it. Mm. I've, I've got no musical links, so you know I, I don't really follow particular mm. musical genres. I like to see a live band, to be quite honest with you, good, and good. Uh, mm. enjoy, yeah, their skills. Good, fantastic. It is a skill. You talked about your job, and you talked about the the the, the limited number of people in your industry. One of the things that we've seen, the limited number of black people. Yeah, in my black industry. people. Exactly, yeah. black people. Let's be let's be clear on that. Since uh, COVID, we've basically, one of the main topics has been racism and the effects of racism, Black Lives Matter, all, all that kind of stuff. Has racism impacted you personally? Have you had any experience yourself or something? Has it impacted you at all? What are you talking about in my industry? No, just generally, like, basically, have you been impacted? I tend to pretty much ignore racism when I hear it. If mm. it is in my face, I just normally knock them out. It's as simple as that. Uh, but in my industry, I've not really experienced mm. racism in lighting. Mm. It's one of the industries where I think it doesn't really exist. Either you can do the job or you can't. Mm. Simple as that. Oh, fantastic. Okay, good. Because obviously, I mean, that's refreshing because obviously a lot of people are impacted, a lot of people are affected by it and their response to it is very, very different. And it's great to hear 
someone racism you know is what? just ignorance really it it, it, it it i've got no time for it you know what i mean i've like, in my industry either you can do the job mm. or you can't that's it mm. pretty much mm. and your race has got nothing to do with it i've never mm. encountered racism in lighting brilliant mm. that's great i'm really chuffed to hear that i mean anyone so anyone out there hearing that there you go there's an industry right there that you can go into where you're not going to be potentially impacted by any of those things so do consider going into that industry another thing as well i wanted to say uh, i've been really excited because obviously when we you were talking that uh, we had a we met recently and it was a conversation you were having. And one of the things that I saw was that you were doing something called The Yard, a project in Brixton. Now, could you tell us a bit about that? Because for me, why it's important for me to have this conversation with you is The Yard for me is everything I would have loved to have achieved. Like I do a lot of this stuff, but it's because I want to do something really important that impacts young people, helps young people. You're already doing that. Can you tell us a little bit about what The Yard project's all about? Right, The Yard... <laughs> The yard is no more. And that's why I now live in Brighton. Living in South London, everyone has this down vibe because everything's quite dirty, quite gritty, and there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of violence on the streets. I was sitting around doing not a lot with no opportunities, really. Don't have a lot of qualifications. I think you've just got to you just got to shy away yourself away from them situations and put yourself into better situations. You know, we've got a great thing here. That's the best opportunity I've had in a while. Whoa, 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 whoa. The yardies are here to prep all the gear for the staging, and they're pulling out the alley deck to stick it on the back of the van to get it ready for the gig tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. London. Living in Brixton, there was a lot of youngsters doing nothing other than trying to stab each other up and giving it the large. So we thought we'll bring them on board, teach them those disciplines. Don't be shy for jumping at any time you like, lads. <laughs> Look, we're carrying it off the edge. What we want to do is train our own youngsters and teach them the stuff that you actually need to know. Basically replace us old fogies. Oh, Yakasha! Yoshi, very capable. Give him a job, he'll get on with it and he'll go beyond. Chloe works hard knows the score and she's specialising mainly in, in sound. Well, so we've plugged this cable in, we should have some noise coming out. Elliot, he's brand new to the scene really. He's showing good skill and we're going to teach him whatever he wants to know. <laughs> yeah, it's good now, we're all set up, we're all ready to roll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopes and dreams for the future, I just want to be able to look back on my life and think that I've achieved something rather than sat around and not done what I know that I'm capable of. <laughs> I, I want to do production management, I want to own my own production company. Definitely optimistic about the future. These Things can only get better. Yeah, I wait really. The future is just definitely looking forward to the future. When the yard was running, mm. it was an interesting idea. It was anything to do with the production industry, basically. Mm. It had a recording studio down there, quite a large one. So you could do a live band and record everything that you needed to be doing. It had acoustic engineers down there who were designing units mm. for the club scene, speaker units. Mm. And it also had a video editing team. It also had an, uh, an architect, Andre, my cousin, mm. uh, had a tree engineer. Uh, it had a, a, uh, a fiberglass caster down there. He used to cast fiberglass things for the movie industry. It had a 
caterer for corporate entertainment. Mm. It had a mechanic, it had a tree surgeon, it had a CAD operator, it had a lighting engineer, that was me. It had many, many aspects. It also had eight 20-foot sea containers so people could store their equipment on tour or whatever. Mm. It was an industry which just got better and better, built it from scratch. And, well, that's it, really. It built it from scratch, and it started making more and more money. And that's it. So, basically, the people that you kind of helped have now gone on to bigger, better things, and they've carried on. Well, that's why I started the the, uh, the yard, mm. um, where it was training youngsters in the production industry, mm. simply because there was an element of, we call them tech heads, mm. that were interested in button pushing, which mm. is basically pushing the buttons on the lighting desk. Mm. However, before you can push the buttons on the lighting desk, you have to build the lighting rig. Mm. And there was a bit of a, yeah, there was just not enough, get your hands dirty and pick this up crew mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. so i thought i'd try my own mm. amazing and they were called yardies okay mate and that's quite again interesting name you have but the fact is well it was because of the name of the site the site was called the yard mm. i called them yardies mm. <laughs> and simply because i knew it would create an, mm. e an element of interest we were well, yeah. right, yardies well you know it's a ridiculous name but don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. And no one else has ever worried about it. And they just got on with it. And some of them have gone pretty well. Fantastic. So COVID though, because obviously even if you say that you're not doing it anymore, it's not stopped. I wasn't asking you how it ended, but COVID impacted a lot of people, you know, because COVID the killed the production industry stone dead. That's what and I it's the to first ask. time mm. it's ever happened in its mm. history mm. internationally. All the events ended overnight which caused a lot of people to lose interest in the production mm. industry the tech heads there was mm. a lack of them after covid wow. that's it so how do you see the future of the music industry then in that case <laughs> there's always going to be parties there's always mm. going to be an event there's always going to be somebody who wants lighting for something so it, it is going to take off again it's not a problem Okay, so it's, oh, you're saying there's going to be a revival at some point. Clubs mm. is it the first start. It's already started. The okay. tours okay. they've started again. Theatre is started again. It's, it it will start again and it will recover. Okay, yeah, because your industry doesn't depend solely on on light on music industry. It also comes no. into yeah. The theater. music industry oh. is just one element. Mm. There are many elements to lighting because you like bridges you like trees you like buildings you like everything once it's dark you need lighting and lighting for the entertainment industry is normally bands it's normally djs that kind of thing but that is just one element of lighting okay so if there's one if there's any other industry you could go into other than the one that you went into is there anything else you would have done or chosen no <laughs> I love that. No, I love that because that's it. That's the point is you found that place in your life. You found that place in your heart that you go, you know what, this is what I want to do. So I want to achieve. Is there anything you can say to any young person out there who's watching this interview, you know, to inspire them to kind of either where we're going to your industry or just to basically believe in themselves, do something. Be prepared to work hard. There is no other way around it. Mm -hmm. If you work hard, learn all the software, which you will have to do if you're going to get involved in operating a lighting desk or mm. playing with intelligent lighting units, which are extremely expensive. Mm. You just graft. You learn mm. it. People will teach you. That is one element of the lighting industry that I loved. Mm. I didn't know sod all about it. And then people just say, oh, well, if you just do this and you just do that, everyone is always happy to help you. It's as simple as that. And I learned it from other people. So I thought I'd do the same with the RD. Mm. And if someone came to you now and said, you look, can you point me in the right direction? Would you be willing to do that? I am planning 
to start mm. the Yardy concept again, mm. uh, whereby I'll take them on to the Glastonbury site mm. if I get the contracts and the Leeds Festival site again if I get the contracts. And that is what I'm working on. So you're yeah. okay, brilliant. So you you got plans to do your own events and things like that? Is that something no, it's doing? not my own event. Mm. It is Leeds Festival. One mm. of the stages at Leeds Festival is the latest opening stage mm. at Leeds. I've been the crew chief of that since it started. Mm. And I planned planned to get my own crew in, crew in there mm. to build the refit of that stage. And I'll be doing this annually. That's the plan. Same with Glastonbury. There's uh, multiple uh, bar areas across site. I plan to put the sound system in those mm. and get youngsters to do it. And that way they'll be learning how to install a sound system at venue and at Leeds, how to install a video wall and a lighting rig for the event. So how would you fund some of that? I mean, do you get support from the local authority? Do you get well, funding? Before from... I had the yard, mm. I fund it all myself. But mm. now I don't have the yard. So now I'm looking for people to help me. You, fund it, you funded it all yourself? Correct. From the profits mm. of the yard. As I said, okay. I had many businesses down there. They had to pay rent for mm. their office equipment, wow. okay. for their space. So that mm. income mm. funded the Yardies project. Amazing. And Joe, you know, one of the things I did notice from the video, there was a video that you put out about the yard and it was showing, it was just basically detailing some of the things, presenting some of the people you were working with, some of the young people that you were giving these opportunities to. And they were talking about that having learned these jobs and they were going to now go on to either set up their own business and so yeah. forth. Now, the, I, what I noticed was, and I, forgive me again, everybody for noticing this, but those kids, those are white kids. And I was really chuffed that you did that. To me, I saw that as quite refreshing because it was like, you know what? A lot of the times when we think about inequality in the UK, we think about inequality as being something that's kind of uh, positioned around black and ethnic people. We don't, we forget that there are lots of working class white people equally that are suffering and struggling in the UK. Was that done, was that, was that done specifically to show that or is that just a coincidence? No, it wasn't done specifically to mm. show that. I'm interested in anyone mm. that's interested in doing the work. Mm. If they're not interested in doing the work, there is no point in them being there. It's as simple as that. And those, the video was a very early video. Mm. And those two were the first two that jumped involved and got involved in this. Okay. And, they did. and they've all, they've mm. both gone forward to do many things along with other youngsters that have done extremely well out of the Yardie project. Mm. No, I only said that because I thought that was just cool because most people do specifically choose people that they want to help rather than just go out and say, you know what, we're going to grab anybody and give anyone an opportunity. And I think that was just quite genuine. And that's what drew me to want to talk to you about this whole thing. But if there's anything yeah. else you want to talk to us about, tell me. I'm very, very interested in, in having this conversation. Uh, no, I can't think of anything <laughs> right now, to be quite honest with you. I've told you what I'm try to achieve mm. anyone mm. that wants to come involved and uh, get involved financially that will fund all of this mm. then i'm happy to take their money brilliant and their money to... will be going to a good cause not being spent on a ferrari they'll be spent on teaching youngsters a new skill a new element in their life that will earn them money it does work Brilliant. Fantastic. Well, one last thing I will say, is there any stories, any kind of fun stories that happened or that during your, your 38 years of experience, stuff that you could share with us? Because, see, I would have loved to talk to you about artists that you knew and you met, but, you know, you, you don't seem to have many of those things. I'd like to know, is there any artists that you met, any fun stories or anything that you could just, you could just, you know, share with us today? Light and crew don't grasp. There you go. <laughs> and that's it, exactly. <laughs> and I can tend, I can take, by just by your demeanor, I know you just lots that you don't want to say, and I'm like, okay, that's great. So it's, that's the whole point. You're giving us wonderful chunks of the industry, and you know, for me, gaining that and anyone hearing that, I think there's gonna be a lot for them to to take from it. 
So it is a fun industry. You get to go out for nothing. Mm. You work to build the set. Once mm. the set is built, mm. you can have fun. You mm. can explore Leeds Festival. You can explore Glastonbury. You mm. can explore Latitude, mm. tours, events, you name it. Mm. You get to go out for nothing. Mm. That's Brilliant. it. Brilliant. And there's one last thing as well. There's one thing, and I didn't want to bring this up because I said I don't know how people <laughs> But, you know, it's like artists and how you, when you guys describe them as turns, which is which is fine. It's fine. But, you know, for you guys, but for maybe some artists, they'll be like, oh, what? Well, I'm just a turn. But we get it. I get it. And it's something you have to distance yourself from the artist and see them as, as just workers rather than actually just big, giant characters that the world will embrace. They don't... They don't really rattle my boat because mm. I'm there to build the lighting rig and what they've given me on a bit of paper. Outside of that, they don't exist. Mm. Once it's up and running <laughs> and they've done their gig, next. Mm. Simple as that. And at Leeds Festival, it's next, 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 next. It's continual. We do multiple stages and the mm. artists don't mean anything to me. The production crew mean a lot to me mm. because that's what I was in charge of, not the turn and that's incredible and that's incredible you have you only will ever have that experience or have that insight or have that perception if you're part of the production crew so everyone if, if you do it you want, you want to have that specific experience and see the world from that perspective go and join the lighting crew or be a part of the production team out there speak to tony wilson thank you so much everyone from cluster view thank you tony really appreciate this opportunity talking to you and i can't wait to get this interview up and out thank you for your time no problem, mate. See you soon. Oh, nice. Sweet, sweet.